Hey guys, welcome to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting video guys. In this video, we are going to again play around with Llama 3.2. As you guys already know that Meta has launched Llama 3.2 as a multi-modality model which can not only work with text but can also work with images. Now most of the content around there is actually talking about images and how we can work that with Llama 3.2. I'm sure you guys have seen my video as well on using image uh, interpreter with Llama 3.2 model. But this time guys, we are going to focus on the two other models that Llama 3.2 has launched. So along with the 11 billion and 90 billion multimodality models, Llama has also launched a 1 billion and 3 billion lightweight models, which are text only models. And these models are so small that they can even be used in a mobile application. So today we are going to actually use these models to actually create a rag pipeline and see how Llama 3.2 models work with those. So I know you guys are excited for it. I am excited for it as well. Let's get started. So first of all, guys, this is my Google Colab file that I initially created for Llama 3.1 testing. But we are going to actually use the same one for using Llama 3.2 as well. Here's how it goes. The first thing first guys, if you want to, you know, play around with RAG pipeline, you have to have some packages installed and we have all these packages. We are going to use Llama index for this and we are going to also use Llama index uh, grok uh, library because we are actually using grok for importing our Llama 3.2 model for AI inference, sorry, with AI inference. And then we have got our grok library. And obviously we need the embeddings because whenever you are working with RAG pipeline guys, you need to convert your document into vectors or a numerical form because computer only understand numbers and for that you need embeddings, right? So these are the few libraries that you need. Obviously I have mentioned the versions of these libraries, but when you are working on it, you can definitely remove these versions and you know, just import them with the latest version as well. Now that we have done with the libraries, it is time to just import the classes, right? So we are actually using Llama index and from that package, we are importing a lot of things like vector store uh, for, you know, creating a vector store or creating a store where you can find your data. And then you have got a simple directly reader. It is for reading your documents. Our storage context and service context are basically the context of the document that you are creating. And you can even use this context for persistence so that later you can actually load this context again and use it again. So you don't have to every time create this whole rag pipeline process for converting your data into a context. You can just create it once, store it and later use it. Now, the next thing is the uh, hugging face embeddings that obviously I have explained you the embedding so you know why we need it. Then we need a sentence splitter just for chunking our data and making it a little bit faster in processing. Obviously, we need grok client guys because we are using AI inference for loading our Llama 3.2 model. Now, we are done with the uh, installing packages, importing libraries. Let's go to the API key configuration. So guys, this is a um, thing that I have explained over and over again. Basically, we are using Grok. So we are going to have the Grok API key. If you want to have the Grok API key, just go to the Grok cloud platform and you can get your API key from there. And if you are using a Google Colab notebook, you need to have this API key in your secrets here so that you can securely import it using this line user data.get and the name of the API key. So now we are actually prepared. We have got all the tools. It is time to start going with the things, right? The first step that we are going to do is data ingestion. Obviously, we need a document that we want to build the rag on. For that, I have imported a document here, which is called as basics of finance. And this is a small PDF file. Ignore the uh, above folder, uh, but just remember that this is a file, any file that you want to actually ask questions on need to be present in your Google Colab. And then you can use simple directly reader input file and the path of that file. And you can even uh, give a path of the directory and then you can load the data from that 
directory as well. So in my case, I only have a single PDF file. So it is just going to read that file and it is going to do it with the help of this method reader.loadData. Obviously, there are certain links around here, guys. So if you want to actually read about the simple directory reader, you can click on these links and read more about it. Now we have loaded our document. We want to see how many documents, uh, what is the length of my document. So you can see that it has got maybe multiple pages and things like that. So it has got around 86 uh, documents inside this one PDF file. You can take any document here. So let's say I'm taking page number five. That means the index four, I'm checking its metadata. So you can look at the data, you can see the file size, the creation date, the modified date, etc. But this is just, you know, simple data ingestion. We haven't done anything with the data yet. The first thing we should do is we should split this data into chunks. Why we need to do that? Because if you provide your large language model a huge big context, it might not be able to read it at once, right? So you need to chunk your data. You need to make sure your, your context length is managed in that sense. So for chunking, we are using a sentence splitter and you can specify your chunk size here. You can specify the chunk overlap where in certain chunks, you will have certain sentences overlapping. Then you use text litter dot get nodes from document and you pass your documents list here. You can see the progress as well if you enable the show progress as true. Now you have got all the chunks. So if you uh, print the length of the nodes, you will see that we have split our documents into chunks and there are 86 chunks, which is essentially the same number of documents that we have. Uh, and now we have all of those in notes and you can again look at any note if you want to know more about it. Now that we have our data prepared, so this is like pre-processing. We also need to make sure that our data is now converted into vectors, right? For that, we need an embedding model. So I'm just using a sentence transformers all mini L6 V2 model. Now, this is a small model, guys. So if you want to use more enhanced models, like sentence transformers, I think version three or something, you can use that one as well. But I wanted to make this notebook a little bit quicker. That's why I'm using this small mini model. All you need to do is just do hugging face embedding, write the name of the model, which is the model that is available on the hugging face. Okay. Again, you can read about this model in these links. Now we have our embedding model prepared. Now we need our large language model prepared, right? So for us, we are using the Grok and in Grok, you can, you will find uh, multiple variations of Llama 3.2. And one such variation is Llama 3.2 1 billion preview, which is nothing but Llama 3.2 1 billion parameter model. You can also change this to 3 billion but let's see how 1 billion works first okay and also you can provide your api key right here now my large language model is loaded and then hi and i also have my embedding model in hand it is time to configure a service context okay so consider it like this that your service context is like a set of tools okay it is like a set of tools which you can just take it out and uh, take it out from a bag or something and just apply it to your document right so now we create the service context from defaults and we pass our embedding model and my large language model and now using this service context i will create my vector store index or you can also think of it like a vector store now vector store is nothing but it is a container of all your documents from where your large language model is going to search from. And this uh, container is having all your documents in its vector format. That is what it's called vector store. So to create a vector store, you can do vector store index from documents. Obviously you need your documents here. If you wanna see the progress, you can set the progress to true. But you need your documents, but how you will convert them into a vector, right? You need some tools for that. Uh, how are you going to get those tools? You are going to get those tools from your service context, which is having your embedding model. So you provide your service context here 
and you also provide your chunked nodes okay so these are your parsing nodes that you can use for uh, because it's already chunked the data so your vector store index will uh, you know benefit from those chunk data you can even read about it from the vector store index link but now that your vector store is uh, created it is time for you to store it why we need to store it it is pretty straightforward guys you don't want to go through all these steps again and again when you are using this rack pipeline in some other place right you don't want the actual document to be transferred to some other place to some other application if you want the same uh, document to be referenced so what you can do is you can just persist this vector store in a file or directory and then you can just use that directory and use it in any different applications to create a simple same rag application so it's more for reusability and for persisting you will do vector store index or storage context dot persist and you provide your document directory name when you do this step then you will see that this storage mini uh, directory which i have mentioned here actually got created okay so that is the step which creates this directory now you have your vector store persisted if you want to load this vector store from that directory all you need to do is do storage context from defaults and mention the name of your directory so you will get your directory name so now you have your vector store with you and uh, you have your storage context you can uh, you need to load the index again from uh, load index from storage so this is just your storage context object and you need to load the index from there that means load your vector file basically and you need to pass the storage context you also need to pass the service context here and then you will get your stored index okay so think of it like this that your storage context is like a collection of your documents and your index is basically like an indexed form of your documents where you get all your documents but you also get an index of that so it becomes quicker to search okay but obviously guys what i'm trying to explain you is in a very uh, simplified language you can read more about this if you go to these links which i have provided in the uh, google colab finally when you have the index created it is time for you to query this index right because this is basically the holy grail of all the data that you want to query on now this has become the key of your rag pipeline to query this you need your large language model and where do you have that large language model that is present in your service context right you have two things in your service context embedding model and your large language model so all you need to do is index as query engine pass your service context here and that becomes your query engine and now you can ask anything to that query engine and what's going to happen in the background is that your large language model is going to come into effect and answer this question by looking into the document that you provided by looking into those web the store that you provided so let's say this document was about the basics of finance so my query is explain market bonds and the query dot uh, query engine dot query basically responds me and says that market bonds are the type of debt instruments and blah 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 they are the following characteristics they are used by governments blah 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 but all this information that it is providing you is actually providing us from the document that we provided uh, in the uh, google colab okay so uh, if you want to use the same rack pipeline for llama uh, 3 billion parameter model guys then you know what you have to do you just have to change this name from 1 billion to 3 billion and this is the exact same name that you can also find in the grok models so you can copy that name exactly and paste it here uh, if you want to use any other model that is present in grok you can do the pretty much same just change this model name to that one and this whole rack pipeline will work for you so that was a video guys all i wanted to show you is how easy it is to integrate llama 3.2 with the rack pipeline and not only this guys i want to show you that even with models like 1 billion parameters which are pretty lightweight you can see that we do get quite accurate response 
and not only that if you are using something like grok ai inference you can get these responses very fast as well you don't really have to download this whole model on your local machine but if you do want to do it on your local there are ways around to do it as well you can use something like olama to actually create a fully local rack pipeline because it actually loads the model on your machine and with these lightweight models it is pretty easier to do so so i hope you guys like this video guys if you do like this video then please do not forget to like this video and share this video with your friends if you have any questions comments suggestions feedback for me please do write down in the comment section below i would be really happy to address them and then guys if you want to support me then you can provide me a super thanks by clicking on the super thanks button and giving any donation that you want also guys you can join my channel for getting access to uh, this content earlier and in the end guys if you have not yet subscribed to my channel then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos i'll see you guys in the next video guys until then take care and bye bye